All right, we're going to start uh, chapter 17. Okay, so chapter 17 is, um, of course, all about the stars, um, our, our introduction to the stars. Uh, one of the things that I should mention right away, and I <clears throat> mentioned this um, in the last chapter, in chapter 16, which deals with the sun, is we'll, we will inevitably compare the stars, other stars, first in our galaxy and then in other galaxies, to our sun. And, and we will only, almost always rely on that. Are, are the stars more massive than our sun? Are, are they hotter? You know, do they, is, is their surface temperature higher or lower than our sun? Um, the luminosity, you know, the, you know how, much, uh, how much energy is coming from that star. So we'll, we'll always compare these things to our sun. All right, so uh, we're going to start with our solar neighborhood. So these are like the immediate stars around, you know, let's say about 100 stars or so around our, around our sun, which is just a small, small drop in the bucket when it comes to all the stars in our galaxy. We'll talk about luminosity and apparent brightness. Um, the apparent brightness basically is how bright the star appears in the night sky. The luminosity is how much how much in, how much energy is coming off of the star, or how much power actually. But um, anyhow, it's 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 as though we were um, you know thinking about like a, a hundred watt light bulb, and then you know it, its its brightness would get would get smaller as you get further and further away, according to you know the, what's called the inverse square law, which of course we studied in laboratory. All right, so uh, then we'll look at stellar temperatures. Remember, uh, Wien's law tells us the surface temperature of the star. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the magnitude scale, the sizes of stars. Um, there, there's uh, d different ways of estimating the, the, the size of the star. Uh, then we'll turn to a huge tool in astronomy when it comes to stars, and that's called the HR diagram, or the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. At that in, in extensive detail, and we'll probably be using that for most of the rest of the semester. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll use it in different manners. Um, then we'll we'll extend our, our distance scale and start thinking about um, distances, um, you know, beyond the, the local neighborhood of, of stars out into our own galaxy, and then certainly the distances to other galaxies. Um, we'll talk about stellar masses. Uh, you know how do how do you uh, how do you measure the mass? There's there's ways of measuring it directly, especially if you have these binary stars. If if one or more stars are orbiting each other, then then uh, calculating the mass is is done with uh, with Kepler's uh, third law. Um, so, all right, and then we'll close out with mass and other stellar. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing, and we did have a lab on this. I, I know I keep mentioning that. I mean, there's a reason that we have these labs is so that you guys can see um, for yourselves the, the, the experimental uh, method at, of determining these kinds of things. All right, so, so uh, you know, this is the basic idea is as the sun, I mean, this is how we started this particular um, di distance use, using the, the stellar pair, using the, Parallax of stars uh, to find distances. So uh, the you know people realized very quickly that um, just using the Earth as the baseline, just just the you know different locations on the on the surface of the Earth, um, even even if locations were you know the, on the opposite diameter, you know the the opposite side of the Earth. Um, you really couldn't see a stellar parallax. There was there's no star close enough that you can actually see that, um, at least at first. Uh, anyhow, um, it, and so this all goes back about 200 or so years, and uh, people realized that, uh, astronomers, of course, realized that you could use the Earth itself as a, the, the, you know, the Earth's motion around the sun as the baseline. As, it, as it's showing, you know, right here. So you know, you look at the you look at the star, um, some distant star, and what you're doing is you're looking at the star compared to where it is against some background of much more distant star. 
years. And, th and that's actually really important, the idea that it has to be much, much more distant stars. Um, so so you, you're, you really only do this with uh, relatively nearby stars. Um, I think it'll go out to uh, just using the, the Earth... Uh, the Earth's orbit, it goes out, I think we can go out to about 200 parsecs or so. Alright, so anyhow, that's that's stellar parallax. You know, you look at the star, and then six months later, you just look at the star, and then if it shifts, you know, look at this bottom picture, right? It, it's shifting with respect to the background of stars. When you look at the, you know, the, the star of interest, is shifting with respect to much, much more distant stars. Alright, and so you, you know, you measure that, sh that, uh, that shift, you measure the angle that it is, and of course you know what the baseline is. Um, and, and nowadays, of course, we know we know what that baseline is in in meters, and of course in, in kilometers as well. Um, and then, so we can find the distance to stars. Uh, right? And um, so the nearest star uh, to the sun, you know, outside of our sun that we've that we've found so far. Um, and, and this was discovered a long, long time ago. Uh, if there are any closer stars, that, it would be a very big surprise in astronomy. All right? But, you know, in, in science in general, you have to leave room for uh, possibilities that, that have not been observed yet. Or, you know, so, anyhow, this is the, the, the nearest one that we've ever found uh, close to the sun. Um, and, and it's so it's called Proxima Centauri, and it's slightly closer to us um, than uh, its its uh, its parent stars. Uh, there's actually three. It's a it's a trinary system. There's three stars orbiting each other: Alpha Centauri, Beta Centauri, and this other one that just just is a touch closer to us, called Proxima Centauri. And Proxima Centauri is a really, really tiny star. It's it's not it's not very big at all. Um, Alpha Centauri actually is of great interest to us because it seems to be very, very similar to our sun, uh, as as we're, we're going to see. Um, sometimes you know it's it's one, wonderful enough to talk about the fact that the, the, these stars are more than four light years away. That is, it takes light. The fastest thing in the universe, more than four years to to cross the distance between uh, Proxima Centauri and, of course, and Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri uh, to reach to reach our telescopes here on Earth. Right, so that that's a lot of space. But to give you a better sense of that, um, a lot of times we will use a model, right? And so these models, and you know, this is this is a perfectly good model. Um, so you take, for example, the Sun is the size of a marble, just an ordinary marble, not the large marbles, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so it's just a tiny little marble. And then the Earth is basically like a grain of sand. And um, if, if we think of the, the distance between the Earth and the Sun, the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is often called one astronomical unit, um, if we set that at one, one meter, um, you know, you, what, what we do, of course, is um, we would uh, represent the Earth as a grain of sand, and we put it, um, as I just said, um, approximately one meter away uh, to represent the, the Earth's sun distance. So what that does for us, if that's the situation, the nearest star, um, which of course would be Proxima Centauri in this particular model, would be 270 kilometers away. So now just if you think about that just for a moment, right, that is, let me do a quick conversion, you know, a, almost 169 miles away. So it's, you know, it's basically uh, close to, not exactly, but close to the distance between, um, you know, uh, Anderson and, and, uh, in uh, Myrtle Beach, R roughly. It's not. That's not exactly it. But but imagine that. Though. So you have you have you know this marble is right there on the Pendleton campus, and um, and that represents the sun. And then you know one meter away or so, um, you you know which is just you know a meter stick away, it would be where where the Earth is. 
And then you would have to go, you know, and travel all the way to Myrtle Beach, r- roughly, this is not exact, but um, to be, uh, you know, like 170 miles away, which is which is approximately what two, 270 kilometers is, to get to the next star, you know, where you put the next marble. And so, like, if you look at the, the solar system, for example, I mean, you think, you know, you think about the, the, you know, the distant planets. Um, Neptune, for example, is, is the ninth planet, er, sorry, is the eighth planet. Um, and then, of course, Pluto, which used to be called the ninth planet, which is now just a what's called a dwarf planet. Um, all of that, and there's actually mater- there's, there's matter out beyond the orbit of, of, of Pluto, or right around the orbit of Pluto, but even a little further, um, all of that, the entire solar system can be contained about 50 meters from that marble. Right? So, so remember, put, put the marble down in Pendleton, go 50 meters. I mean, you're, you're, you know, that's, you know, that's, the, that's like the size of a building, basically. Um, you know, 50 meters would be, you know, half a football field, roughly. And, and, and so that that space represents our entire solar system. And then, you know, going all the way to Myrtle Beach, as I mentioned before, would be, um, you know, that's the space between our star and the next star over. So that it's, when we say that, I mean, you just really need to absorb the, you know, that's some uh, like a mental picture you can put in your head and say, you know, imagine all that space be- between us and Myrtle Beach is just, you know, empty space. There's, if, if there was nothing there, that would represent the distance to the nearest star. Okay. Um, so here's, here's a nice little picture. This is, um, this is just showing us, uh, what is it, roughly 30 or so of the nearest stars. Um, I'll just point out a couple of them uh, for the heck of it. There, here, there's, of course, Alpha Centauri and, um, Proxima Centauri is this, the red one right here, which is just slightly closer. The, the, right in the center of this is, is our sun. And then, you know, this, this is, a, of course, in three dimensions. Um, that uh, you know, this is not obvious um, in, in, when you're looking at this picture. Um, uh, the next star system, so Alpha Centauri, you can consider a star system. That's the nearest, you know, this, this trinary system. Um, the next nearest one is called Barnard Star, and so that that's that's right here as it's showing. Um, another close one is uh, Wolf um, three five nine. Where is that? Uh, this picture. Uh, there it is. Wolf three five nine. That's that's a uh, another relatively close one. A Tau Ceti, which is oh, there it is right there. Um, uh, uh, Epsilon Eridandi, which is, oh, right there, right there. Yep, so that's another one. Um, I mean, these are, these are just some of the near, nearby ones. Uh, Procyon actually is a particularly, particularly bright star that you can see in the night sky. If you look and, uh, you know, if you know where, for example, um, the, the Orion is, um, Orion, of course, is a very big constellation you can see in the, in the, in the winter sky in the northern hemisphere, it's very easy to see. Um, and uh, it just just to the left of, of Orion, um, and and you know lower, so, so to to the left and south is um, is the brightest star in the night sky, which is called Sirius. Um, and the, uh, and then there's another bright star that's not too far, you know, just looking up in the night sky, uh, called Procyon. And Pro- Procyon is actually turns out to be physically relatively close to us, as it, as it shows here. Um, let's see, so there's Epsilon Eridandi, I mentioned that. Oh, this, this is another, this, I, I was pointing at the wrong thing, this is Epsilon uh, Indy. Um, so there's Epsilon Eridandi. All right, and yeah, so these are, these are some relatively close ones. All right, and, oh, as I mentioned before, there's Bar- Barnard Star. Um, Barnard star produ- uh, exhibits what's called proper motion. So it actually, with, without parallax, it actually moves in the night sky. Um, very slowly, mind you, but 
you know, over, over 